My name is Jessica Lee Jones. I'm the co-founder and chief executive of Youngo Solutions, and I'm also the former chair of the Centre for Digital Public Services in Wales. My new white paper, written in collaboration with the Open University and Training Zone, launched just recently, and we are looking at the role of L&D in enabling social mobility. So the white paper is very practical. We do a deep dive into different socially diverse talent pools, the specific barriers that they face, and how we can help those individuals and those groups to contribute and add value to the organisation, whilst also then being able to progress and improve their social mobility. So it's a very, very practical paper. We're looking at providing hints and tips for employers to really maximise social diversity and maximise the talent in their organisations at a time where it's very, very difficult to recruit and retain new talent. When we talk about social mobility from a workplace context, we're talking about how we can identify groups of individuals who may have specific barriers due to their socioeconomic background and how we can help those individuals to overcome those barriers so that they can achieve higher levels of success and progression within the organisation. Social mobility is important to organisations because, as we know, it is very, very difficult to recruit and retain talent. And so what it, recruiting from a socially diverse talent pool offers is the ability to um, recruit, grow, retain and reward different types of talent that can offer different contributions, different perspectives, diversity of thought that can help that organisation to go further. There are many different types of social mobility and there's guidance in the report on how as an organisation, regardless of your size and your resources and your expertise in this area, there is guidance on how you can measure the social diversity of your workforce. There's also then guidance on how you can support specific individuals to really unlock the potential that they have and progress within your organisation. Learning and development plays an important role in levelling the playing field for socially diverse talent, particularly for individuals who perhaps didn't connect particularly well with school. Workplace L&D and L&D in later life op offers that opportunity for individuals to access higher levels of education without being in what might seem uh, an intimidating uh, full-time education environment. And it's a little bit more practical for them to be able to engage with learning um, around their sort of home, work and life commitments as well. You know, a lot of people, young people in South Wales, living in generational poverty. We're in third generational poverty in some of the valleys. If we can break down those barriers, using you know a very simple concept the young people help design to bring these opportunities into their communities and with you know with working as it is hybrid models you know we got the companies in cardiff that can employ people from the valleys and without having to travel they can work there is an opportunity and equally a challenge for welsh organizations so if we just centralize around cardiff right now we you know cardiff companies are able to employ you know people in the valleys people that are, you know, who may find travelling to Cardiff is more of an occasion than a commute. Um, so it opens up that, that talent pool. We can get into the communities because of remote working. We can offer Welsh people Welsh jobs. Conversely, because the skill set is maybe not there, those jobs are actually going remote elsewhere. So we're exporting skills. Um, sorry, we're importing skills, we're exporting jobs. And that's a real concern of mine because if we had the talent, if we've been on a journey and we'd upskilled that talent by now, we always knew it was coming, remote working, but the pandemic has just accelerated it. Welsh companies, unfortunately, uh, don't have access to the talent they need, so they're having to export jobs, import talent. Um, but, you know, hopefully, with the work that, that I'm doing and so many more, we can upskill a generation so those jobs stay in Wales. There are lots of enablers available to employers to help them to work with these socially diverse groups. So longer term interventions may be things like apprenticeships, um, higher apprenticeships, entry level apprenticeships. There are various different pathways that exist to take people from all levels of the organisation up to sort of filling those key skills gaps. There are also much short term interventions that are currently being developed. So, for example, the new skills boot camps and the skills academies and related products that exist across the four nations can really help to plug those immediate short term skills requirements.